Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Marley Caden. LiDAR company Ava has been on a tear for the last four months. Their shares are up over 500 percent so far on the year. So let's find out what the driving forces are behind those big moves to the upside. Joining us now to give us some insight, Saroosh Salahian, the co-founder and CEO of Ava. Saroosh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hi, Marley. Of course, thank you for having me. We're so glad to. So first, could you just tell our viewers a little bit about what it is that Ava does? Yeah, of course. So um, maybe just to put that in context, um, Ava is a perception company. And right now, what we're really focused on is um, bringing a new kind of perception technology to mass market applications. So if you zoom out, the, really the race to automate everything from passenger vehicles to trucks, uh, airplanes, factory robots is really uh, heating up. And that race is relying on what's called LiDAR. Uh, LiDAR uses lasers to uh, really help self-driving cars, uh, devices, machines, uh, seeing objects in the world. And that's something that has been around for um, you know quite some time. So, um, however, um, for us, what's different actually in our LiDAR technology is that um, we actually um, measure uh, not just uh, uh, the distance of objects and, and seeing the objects in the world that way, but we call it a four-dimensional 4D LiDAR. We measure actually the velocity of objects as well. And that speed that measures is something that's unique and really helps those autonomous vehicles or machines or others uh, make faster, safer, and more intelligent decisions uh, as, as they really come about. So LiDAR is becoming kind of foundational to automated systems. There is this race to automate everything. And um, you know we are kind of at the forefront of that next generation um, for the uh, you know speed measuring LiDAR sensor. And so that's not the only differentiator that you discuss in, in terms of them being 3D LiDAR versus yours, what you call 4D LiDAR, because you measure the speed as well. You also um, make your chips differently, more mindful of the mass production needs. How does your company do that as opposed to how competitors produce theirs? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the key differentiations for us, uh, as you mentioned, is uh, it, it, when it comes down to scaling and comes down to bringing the product to mass market, that's really where I think Ava shines um, compared to, I think, folks that are out there. Um, and the reason for that is because we have been able to put everything down on a single, um, what we call, lighter on chip. And um, to really visualize that, I have a chip here I can show you. So this is basically um, a very small, compact chip that um, really integrates um, all aspects of uh, the LiDAR sensing into this chip. And for example, you know, the receivers, the transmitters, all the optics. And what that means is we can make the system much, much simpler. Uh, it's super miniaturized. It's much easier to assemble and produce. And therefore, we can achieve those scales uh, so that our customers, the folks that we work with, um, for example, done a truck in, in, the, in the commercial vehicle space and others can actually rely on this for their production uh, programs, and that's quite different than than folks. So you know, typical lidars, you have to work through more complex assemblies, uh, more manual operations, um, and to automating those at high volumes is, is not super trivial. Uh, but most importantly, the 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 process of uh, assembly, test, and calibration becomes becomes much simpler with uh, a technology like ours. So, um, and, and what we have seen is our customers really see that as kind of a game changer in addition to the fact that it can measure just, you know, velocity in addition to distance. So, um, but obviously autonomy anywhere from machines on vehicles to robots or others can't really scale um, unless you can actually have a, a scalable sensor hardware uh, that goes along with it. So. Um, Ava can fulfill the orders. Um, we have seen a significant growth in our in our demand across not just automotive, but also industrial robotics and other applications. So um, that is kind of uh, where where we're seeing that traction in the space right now. And I know a lot of the focus when we're talking about LiDAR is on automotive and, and full self-driving cars. I know Waymo uses LiDAR technology. What are some of the other places that people may not be aware LiDAR is being used, some of its other uses? Yeah, absolutely. So, as you said, one of the key kind of uh, uses of LiDARs right now is really around um, automotive applications. So, um, folks like Waymo, folks uh, in the passenger automotive space uh, and trucking space. But there's uh, other areas where, uh, we, you know, we call it perception technology um, that is used uh, and LiDAR is part of that is um, in, for example, industrial sensing where um, 
uh, you're looking to really measure precise um, uh, ac- you know, micron level accurate measurements of the uh, uh, objects that are actually being used to manufacture a park. So we have, for example, partnerships with folks like Nikon, um, which is um, big in industrial, what's called industrial metrology equipment, um, uh, uh, AG, LMI, a few others that are really actually going after uh, manufacturing automation, which is the robots that actually make the parts. They make the vehicles, they make the different pieces of, of technology. And where that shines is being able to measure something from a, a distance at micron level accuracy. And that's something that's quite different. No LIDAR today can actually achieve that. And um, I think this whole breadth and flexibility of our perception platform is something that uh, we are seeing that traction uh, in that space. Another area besides uh, industrial is um, actually around uh, uh, air transport. Uh, we have a, a collaboration ongoing with Airbus for uh, ground taxing operations. Um, so that is basically obviously a, a, an important area where you have to uh, be able to see everything on the ground to be able to monitor and do those automations. Um, and so we are we are you know tackling multiple different areas, um, not just on automotive but also industrial. Um, as well as um, uh, airport uh, and, you know, in other ways, also security applications. So um, it's the, the breadth of, of kind of perception sensing is, is quite broad. And that's something that, um, you know, we have been planning on for quite some time in the past number of years um, as part of the vision for the company. And as I'm looking at your chart right now, you're up more than a thousand percent in the past year, just the last six months, up more than 550 percent. What would you say are the major catalysts behind that massive growth? Yeah, absolutely. Look, first of all, of course, you know, we're, we're pleased to see that. But this is by no definition, um, you know, the, the destination. We're obviously on a, on a journey to bring our product to mass market applications. Um, we um, are really heads down and focused on on delivering our product to the market. I would say there's maybe about three catalysts that that has helped us to get to this point. Um, first of all, um, we started in you know about a year or so ago on a production program where we were awarded by Daimler Truck in a large production program to bring our technology to the to the autonomous trucking applications. Um, and earlier this year, we started partnering with um, um, an automotive passenger OEM, uh, which is a top ten automotive OEM that we hope to share more about in the future. And that um, OEM, I think, was one of the catalysts because it shows the applications of our of our product across also passenger applications. Um, so that's that's one. I think the, the other piece is really around our expansion into industrial spaces. So with a portfolio of products that we're working on, all based on the same chip platform that um, I, I mentioned earlier, we have been able to go into these other applications in industrial and precision sensing where automated manufacturing um, at the speed of uh, um, uh, uh, automation for, for mass volume is, is becoming uh, super critical. So, uh, and our vision is to for Ava to power um, automation, not just automotive, but also manufacturing in other markets. So that's the second piece is industrial manufacturing. And the third piece I think is um, you know, we have been, uh, we've gone the, the kind of vote of, uh, vote of approval from a Fortune 500 company um, um, for an investment of up to $50 million into the company. And um, we're, we're hoping to share more about that at our upcoming AVA Investor Day, which is um, end of July, um, happening just later this month in New York City. So um, these are, I would say, three of the catalysts. We have had um, great customer traction, new product traction in the market. And also, uh, you know, large long-term investors backing the company, which I think have all led to um, this growth that we're seeing currently in the space. So one final question for you, Sarush. You say this is no means the destination. Where is Ava going? Look, our vision is to really bring perception to everything. And I think um, uh, we are, you know, in, in, in a, um, you know, Great space where we're, there's a race to automate everything. We think that Ava can really be um, at, at a place at the heart of powering physical AI for wherever a machine, uh, be it a car, uh, a truck, a robot, um, a security system uh, that needs to perceive and understand its surroundings, that Ava is inside and Ava is powering that. So that is, I think, uh, where we see the vision and you know the journey is just starting. And um, we're really excited to be uh, leading um, kind of the industry for 
um, what we see for hopefully years to come. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon and for telling us more about Ava. That's Saru Salahian, the co-founder and CEO of Ava.